Pam, can you describe the difference in fats found in goat milk and cow milk? I am so glad you asked this. So glad. I am an enormous advocate of eating a full rainbow of fatty acids, of fats. We in, in the diet, because of what we eat, we get a lot of animal fat. So for meats, eggs, and, and milk, cow milk, we get a lot of long chain fats. That is overwhelmingly the main fat we get. We eat relatively very low levels of medium chain fats. The only sources are primarily coconut and goat. And then we get almost no short chain fats because we don't eat fermented foods, but I'm an enormous advocate of fermented foods, but we get a little bit in dairy of all animal, all animal milk. We get a little short chain fats too, but very, very little, but I believe we should eat all of them. So one of the reasons I love goat dairy, although my kids hate it and refuse to drink it because it's too tart, but it's tart because of the shorter chain fats. So all of the medium chain fats are named after a, a, the uh, or a, a version of the word for goat. I think the Greek word word for goat for, for goat. They are in no particular order: capric, caproic, and caprylic. So they're all sort of this goat word derived because goat milk has higher levels of medium chain fats. That's why they're a little more bitter or tart, rather. That's the better word, tart. The older I've gotten, the more I love tart foods. I probably wouldn't have when I was younger. You know how tastes change. Mine especially changed when I lived in Russia in the mid nineties. Um, I became to, I just became in love with tart foods for some reason, like the more fermented, the better. And that has persisted much to my delight.